How are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing great. Just finished loading the kiln. So I got uh, time to do whatever we're going to do. Oh, yeah. What's your capacity? Like, I don't know much about pottery, but uh, how many pots can you do at once? Uh, it depends on the size. So if they're small, like this, this type of size, I can get probably 150 in the kiln. But oh, wow. I don't make I don't make any I make anything from that size up to the biggest I can do right now is about 21 inches in diameter. Radical. So if I do those, I can get maybe three, three inside. So it just depends on the size that I'm making. Yeah, man. I watched some of those videos that you put up, man, and they're incredible. It's like mesmerizing watching the, the clay get formed and go yeah, up yeah. And down and hypnotic. Yeah. It's an interesting process for sure. I very much enjoy it and I enjoy the content that you put out and I'm like super humbled that you uh, were willing to come on here, man. Uh, where, where are you from originally? Where do you hail from? Uh, uh, San Francisco Bay area, uh, okay. born and raised there. Uh, what, uh, what graduated high school, 81. Okay. So, uh, went to school, high school out there, junior high, all the, that out there and worked out there. Just kind of did my thing. Wasn't really into plants. I got into plants probably just out of high school when I when I bought my bought my first house in eighty. I think it was eighty four, eighty five. I bought my first house, mm -hmm. and I wanted the landscape, so I went for Cal, uh, California natives. That's mm -hmm. kind of what got me started in all this plant thing, and you know shrubs and trees and perennials, that kind of thing. And then uh, I went to Tilden Park up in the Oakland Hills to the uh, California native botanical garden. And I saw, uh, you know, a desert landscape there and I saw some cactus and succulents and things like that. So they kind of started the bug for that. So I made a little uh, cactus and succulent area in my yard. And this was in Vallejo. That was like I said, 86, 85, somewhere around there. That's and a long time. Kind of, and then it just grew from there. Yeah it's hard to pinpoint what exactly because i i see from on a day-to-day -day, maybe even post by post uh basis your styles the different types of plants all the time you can yeah. say just about anything huh at yeah, this point to, to a certain extent you know some i've learned a lot over over the years and what will work and what won't work and that kind of thing yeah pretty unique stuff man incredible work yeah, yeah, I've collected a you know a, a wide array of things. Back, well, let's see. I got into the South African succulents. That was probably ninety ninety one, because um, I, I got hurt at work and you know I wasn't working and uh, I used to go down to the botanical gardens in Berkeley and just wander around there and then you know because I couldn't do anything else and I came across the South African garden at uh, Strawberry Canyon. And that's what got me started on, on the South African succulents. Can you can you uh, name some of those the, for me? What the plants? Yeah, what falls into that into the, South African euphorbia? Well, like no euphorbias, yeah. aloes, cyphostemas. Okay, uh, there's all kinds. Uh, awesome. Conophytums, lithops, just wide range of different different types of succulents in that area, and that's yeah. the kind of what got me. You know, and then in 91, and then, you know, at that time, there wasn't a lot of nurseries out like there is now. But back then, you know, I went, there was Home Depot and a couple of small nurseries around. And, you know, I found my first succulent was a Cyphostema jute that I found at Home Depot mm -hmm. uh, in a three inch pot. And that was in 91. And I still have it today. And, you know, it's, it's a monster today, you know, but I don't. I tend to grow things on the neglect side. So they, they, they resemble habitat plants. And that's what mm -hmm. I like is that, that beat up looking, I don't like a pristine looking uh, plant is, you know, a lot of my plants are, are stressed looking and I get a lot of flack for that sometimes, but that's just my preference. And, you know, it's, when you get so many plants, it's very easy to take care of that way. Yeah. 
I can appreciate that a lot. That's like what's magnificent about these types of plants is that they they can survive. Yeah, the that's what they're designed. Climate. Yeah, yeah, they're designed to survive on minimal nutrients, minimal water, minimal everything, root space, you name it. Yeah. Cool. Um, I actually I, I made a post and uh, I put out some questions to Instagram and some people were asking. I, I felt kind of embarrassed. I asked Euphoria Euphoria this uh, on one episode what his nationality was, but what I meant to say was what his ethnicity is. One yeah. of the questions submitted was uh, <laughs> was are are you Pinoy? And that question came from I'm a little green minded. <laughs> I'm half. So really? my mom, my mom is uh, from Hawaii. Her parents are first generation from the Philippines, so they came to the Phil uh, to Hawaii in the early 1900s. Wow! Uh, she was born in 1940, um, and you know, my parents. You know, I was born here in California, and they took me back to see my grandparents. I think it was like four or five and my grandmother, you know, even to how old I remember, you know, when she was in her sixties could barely speak any English, but at that time she was even worse and she didn't say Keith. It came out Ketoy for whatever reason. Cool. And that's been my nickname ever since. So my parents, my sisters, all, all my family call me Ketoy. And so that's just the, I use that as for the pottery, for the plants, for everything. Yeah. It's just, I use that for all my, that's my uh, trademark, I guess. I, I don't know what you would call it. Yeah. It's like a, a, a stage name almost. Yeah. A stage name. Yeah, there yeah. You go. yeah. I like that. That's really cool, man. I, I would have never guessed that that's what it was from. Yeah. Um, would, would you, I, I'm half Filipino too. I don't know if you've heard some of the other episodes I've mentioned that. Um, yeah. My mom was born in the Philippines and, uh, I'm very, I was raised by that side of my family. Well, so I was going to ask you, was it, was, would you argue that it was like a naturally part of your culture to appreciate plants? Uh, I, I don't know because my mom was in, you know, house plants, mm -hmm. but never, you know, now she's more into plants. But at that time, all I remember was house plants. I don't remember a lot of gardening happening and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, now, you know, because I went back to the Philippines in 2019, you know, I was the I was invited to the uh, Cactus and Succulent Convention as, a, wow. as their guest speaker. So they flew me out to uh, Manila to the, to the club and I did a talk on staging, and, you know, and got to visit all the different nurseries in the area and, and that kind of thing. So I did that in 2019. Wow, what an incredible experience. That's so cool yeah, to get invited oh, yeah. to was, the motherland for that. Yeah, it was very, very, uh, not enlightening, but it was just a different way of doing the same things, you know, because of the climate, you know, and I, I went to some areas that the climate was like San Diego, where it was cool, foggy, and that's where all the big nurseries were. And then like down in Manila, it was, to completely different the, the plants that were grown and the conditions as it was hotter humid more humid and uh, yeah, it's just different uh, culture there mm -hmm. i would guess that, that, that they have a pretty uh big cactus community then uh it's fairly new okay you know probably 10 years you know okay. there's some there's some i met a, quite a few growers that have been doing it for many 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 years Mm -hmm. uh, but the bulk of it is fairly recent within the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, what was interesting about the, you know, cause I've been to conventions out here in the U S and it's, it was totally different. Like here, it's more educational in that it's, you know, more slideshows and talking about destinations and that kind of thing where mm -hmm. their convention was more of a hands-on approach where they had little workshops where, there's all these little old ladies learning how to graft yeah. and how to degraft and how to root and how to propagate from seed and how to do a lot of the basic stuff that, you know, we kind of pick up as we go where, you know, you learn from friends or, you know, 
online now and you just kind of you know figure it out as you go yeah where there they were actually teaching you know how to go about with these processes which i thought was very interesting that's awesome where where did you uh where did you find your love for pottery let's see so i've been growing the plants for all these years and a lot of the i knew people in the clubs already i wasn't really into the club scene or the shows or anything like that i was just into growing plants and and just growing the plants and mm -hmm. you know there was a few guys who said oh you got to take it to the show you got to go to the show you, you know these plants are great you got to take them to the show and so i i went looking for pots you know i went to home depot and all these different places nurseries pottery outlets and all the pots are either too big too expensive too shiny too, too ornate it just wouldn't suit what i had in, in a vision in my head what mm -hmm. the pot should look like so uh, at that time I was married and my, my ex at the time was doing, she was making porcelain dolls and had a kiln. And so I just, I looked on, let's see, that was in 2008, I believe. Wow. So I went, went on YouTube and I just went and, and basic succulent pot. I just put in that and there was a person made a pot on a, a drape mold. And so I went down to the pottery cer ceramic supply and I bought 25 pounds of clay, made a simple pot over a wash tub I had. Uh, I put the plant in it, took it to the inner city show, got on the trophy table and that kind of snowballed from there. That's so fucking cool. What kind of plant was it? Uh, it was the Cyphostema. Oh, Cyphostema okay. Okay. I took that big ass, you know, it was probably a hundred pounds at the time. You know, with the potty a little more, and you know, it's just a basic pinch pot, really drape form. And but you know, I got it, I want it. And then you know, that first couple of years, I just tried, I tried all the different techniques I could, I could learn about. I, I, you know, tried different. I tried raku, I tried pit fire, I tried all these different things just to kind of get a feel for the clay and and, and my style and that kind of thing and. I don't remember exactly how I came across or how I do it now, but I, I don't know if I dropped the clay or, or, or something. I, I did something on accident Wow! and it, it made this impression in the clay. And I, I wonder if I can recreate that. Mm -hmm. And that's just kind of what I figured out how to do certain techniques. And, you know, like in all things in clay, everything's pretty much been done. You know, everybody does a little differently. But sure. all the techniques have, have pretty much been done. So I just take from, I look at, I don't usually look at plant pots to get inspiration. I look at dirt. I look at soil. I look at rocks. Mm. I look at mountains. I look at anything. Where I'm, wherever I am, I look around and I just, I wonder if I could, because there's a few pots I made. We were at this lake up in Sonora and the way that, the, the rocks formed around the lake were vertical. And I wonder, I was thought, looked at it, and I think, how is there a way I could recreate that in a pot? I made a few of them, and I, I'm still working on perfecting that technique, but, uh, uh, you know, I just get ideas from wherever. And pottery tends to go in trends. Mm -hmm. You know, if you watch what everybody does, you know, everybody kind of does very similar. So what I try to do is wherever I see the trend, I go the opposite direction. Okay. And so I just try to be, that's why I'm always changing. I'm always evolving. I'm always doing something different just to stay away from everybody else. Uh huh. I can appreciate that. That's dope. I'd say you succeeded at that. Yeah. Yeah. I try, you know, and then I do a lot of things with the plants that nobody really does, you know, nobody root prunes. And I learned, I took bonsai courses back in the nineties uh -huh. and that's, I took what I learned there and I applied it to the succulent. So when I do, you know, like when I do my videos of the root pruning, mm -hmm. you know, this was that much taller and I just chopped that off because what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll plant this on a tile inside of a pot and then this root mass will stay close here instead of wandering down. Mm -hmm. And that's what they do for bonsai trees. And so I just took what I learned there and apply it to the succulents. Beautiful. Uh, I saw you cut that thing, I think, earlier. 
in your story. Yeah, yeah, I think that was one of the ones I did. Yeah. Here's the one I rechopped this one today because I didn't, I didn't like, I was looking at it compared to a pot. And I didn't like it, so I cut it off again today. So I'll let that dry a few days and then I'll pot it up. I'm so happy that you have some visual uh, to show yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, you know, like I brought different things over, like different pot. This is something I tried out of a different technique and it's two different clays and it just dries at different rates and then it cracks. Mm. So it cracks naturally. Yes. I didn't have to do anything to it. It's just the way it dried and formed and that kind of thing. And then I take like this one is a pot. I actually, it's called a scrapper. And so after I carve pots and things like that, I have clay left over. And instead of recycling it to make fresh clay, I just take the wet pieces and throw them into a mold and I press it together. And then I make stuff like this. Cool. And then that's a Rabudia Cranziani, Cranziani, and then a little sedum that volunteered in there. Mm. So a lot of times I, I like to build the pot around the plant. Most people don't have that luxury. You know, they have to get the plant, then go find a pot where I can, my, what I love to do is get, go hunt for a plant, the gnarliest looking thing I could find, and then create a plant or a pot around it. That's my favorite. Yeah. So like the, uh, this uh, conophytum may, mayri eye, that's what I, I found this plant. And then I made this pot to go with it. So you're custom making pots for plants that you find. Yeah. And that, that's, that's sick, what I like. To, that's what I like to do the most. And there's, you know, people that live like there's a guy that lives fairly close to me. I'm going to go pick up a plant of his on Thursday and then design a pot for it, make it, stage it, and give it back to them. Nice. So you'll do like custom order for people. Someone says, hey, I got this yeah. plant, bro. Will you make yeah. me a pot for it? Yeah, I do it all the time. You know, a lot of, and then like the guys in Southern California or back East will send me a picture of the plant with dimensions. And then I want to know, you know, certain root depths and all this kind of thing. And then I'll design something around that. So do you like draw stuff out too? No, it's all done in my head. Oh, wow. I don't, I don't sketch anything. I don't take one note. No fucking way. I don't keep track of anything. Um, if something happens and I like it, it's very hard to recreate. Uh, I'm one of those, I just kind of fly by the seat of my pants with whatever I make or do. Yeah. Uh, I don't, uh, when I like today loading the kiln, I had space for some little pots. So I just rolled out some clay and to do most, like nobody should do this. Probably nobody does it except for me is I make the pot. It's in the kiln now drying and then I'll fire it tonight. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's still wet, um, mm-hmm. but I've learned on the size of the pot that, that I can do that with and the thickness of clay. So if the thickness is too much, it'll explode. If it's the right thickness, it'll dry and then uh, be ready to glaze tomorrow. Cool. I'm happy so that like, you're transparent about that. Giving yeah, away yeah, little secrets. I, yeah. Well, and then the thing is I have my own kiln, so I can do these kind of things. Most people, yeah. they go to studios or they rent space in a kiln. And they can't do what I do. You know, I do glazing that you, there's no way you could do that in a, a commercial kiln because it makes a mess. Mm. Yeah, like, uh, I don't know if I have, uh, I don't, have. oh, there's one. Hold on. Let me okay. get it. This dude's fucking cool. Like this, this crater glaze here, you can't do this in a commercial kiln. That is so it, cool, it, man. It makes a mess but I have my own kiln and my own shelves and I can experiment and do things that you just can't do. Yeah. What, where, where do you find inspiration to make a pot like that? I mean, to me, it looks like molten lava or something. That was, uh, well, like this one, the same thing. This yeah, is, this is sure. my original lava pot. And I got the idea for this on a lava hike in Hawaii a couple of years ago. Cool. Um, it, we, it was some fly by night outfit and we had to hike like eight miles through residential backyards and, until we got to the lava fields uh-huh. and we got to hit, they let us play in the lava, which was incredible. And I got all these ideas 
just from playing in that clay with sticks and rocks and <laughs> getting as close as we could and, and, and things like that. So. And that just stays in your head with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've never, like I said, I've never written a thing down. Wow. That's so incredible. When I go, all my secrets will go. <laughs> <laughs> no record, no leaving no record behind, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, one of a kind, man. That's cool. What else? So, what else? Oh, like... Uh, yeah, you know, and then I have some unusual stuff like this. This guy here I posted yesterday, and uh -huh. this one always brings up a, a storm of controversy because it's so shallow. This is one inch deep inside the pot. Sure, you know, an area carpus. Everybody's oh, it's got to have a deep pot. It's got to have this. It's got to have that. And it all depends on how it was raised as a seedling. Uh huh. You know, if it's raised in a deep pot, yeah, the tap root's going to be long and thick and deep, and yeah. so you, yeah, it needs a deeper pot. But this was raised in the shallow pot forever and it was shallow when i got it and uh -huh. so i didn't have to cut anything off and i just made this pot for it uh-huh so you know they don't actually ask... need a deep pot as everybody is told yeah i was going to ask you about that uh how long do, do some of these have to eventually move out you know like are you are you staging certain plants and then do they eventually sometimes have to move or are you able to keep uh, them Sometimes it depends, you know, I grow them so hard, they can be in the pot for many, many, many years. Uh -huh. You know, like this one's been in here for at least five years and it's still got plenty of room and, and like that. This Dudleya here has been in this pot at least eight years. Wow. And if you look at it, this is what it would look like in the ground in the desert somewhere. Yeah because it's so compact you know you a lot right. of times you see them the leaves are elongated the rosettes are are kind of opened up because it's in too much shade you know i'm in the central valley modesto area okay and so you know today it was 80 degrees and this is baking in the sun this will be in the, the 100 degree sun this summer yeah so but I don't know. It just, and it survives. It comes back every year. I'm surprised it does because everyone's, oh, it's a coastal plant. It'll die. But, you know, I've had it for at least 15 years. And like I said, it's been in this pot for a, a number of years. What, what, what is that? Uh, Dudleya, Dudleya Bretonii. Okay. Yeah. So you're, you're, mimic, you're mimicking habitat quite well, yeah. man. Yeah, and that's that's always that's my goal. Whenever I do something, you know, whether it's like this ow, sharp one here, this is uh, Tephrocactus Weberii. Cool. That's a half inch half inch deep pot. Wow. And it's been in there, in, I don't know, probably six months. Uh huh. But you know, and what I did is I I didn't usually if I was taking this to a show, I would tie it to the plant or tie tie it to the pot you know, around the roots and then through the drain hole and take a piece of wire and tie it down. Okay. But since it, it's just here, not going anywhere, I just wedge a rock in there to hold it in place till it establishes. And now it's in there. It's, it's pretty stable in there now. Yeah. And this will slow it down to a crawl. It won't, it grows slow already. It's going to grow even slower like this. Cause there's no, there's no moisture. It only gets whatever I feed water it, which will be anywhere from, two weeks to a month or longer before I water it again. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, I just like that gnarly you know, look to it. And then, you know, the pot kind of accentuates the plant. Yeah. Looks like it was made for it. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> that's cool, man. Uh, I was going to, what was I going to say? I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> the laws of my train of thought. Do you mind? Do you mind fielding some questions that, oh, that I got? I'll, yeah, whatever you got. When when we I think we already got to this. You started making pots. This is from Pokey Raccoon. Huh. She said, "When did you start making pots?" That's two thousand eight, correct? Yeah, two thousand eight is when I started. That was my first pot, a simple pot. Two thousand ten is when I kind of figured out my style, uh -huh. and then. My style now, because a lot of times, you know, you go to the shows, you go to, you know, whether you see all the pots and you can, if you're knowledgeable about 
the potters and the techniques and that thing, you can pretty much spot whose pot is whose. And, and most people can spot my pots, the same thing I can spot, you know, Pablo's pots, I can spot, you know, all these different pots that come around, like, you know, who's, who makes whose. Because it's, you know, there's only a handful really that make, uh, make decent you know, succulent pottery. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I'm becoming more and more fascinated by, by pottery. I, let's see what else we got here. Ashwagandha Blossom <laughs> said, how do you decide what fits? Root shape slash size, plant size, yours vary and always look great. How do you decide what fits? All right. So this is, I think this is the biggest point everyone misses. It's proportions. If you look at my plants, my stagings, stagings, everything, it's, it's everything is proportional. The pot is proportional to the plant. A lot of times you go plots, pots are either too deep, too wide, too, and, and it just does, it looks like the pot was just, the plant was just put in the pot. That would be like if I took this and I put it in here, it, it looks okay, but it would look better in something that was shallower and wider. You know, okay. so when I, when I make something, you know, like this little dud layer here, it's proportional to the top. Yes, you know, it is. The, the pot doesn't overpower the plant. Okay. So everything is in proportion to what, what's happening, what's mm -hmm. going on above. You know, same with this little crashula here. It's proportion. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest thing everybody misses. Yeah. You know, everybody tries to use, they want it to grow into that pot. Right. Instead of getting a pot that, you know, and it's different for me because... I make the pot. So when the pot gets too, when it gets too tight, you know, I'll either make a new pot or I'll take it out, chop up the roots and put it back into the pot. That's mostly what I, most time what I do. Mm -hmm. I rarely make a new pot unless it breaks. A lot of times I'll just take the plant that's in there that's getting snug in that pot and I will rip it out of that pot, cut the roots and make it fit back in that pot. Mm -hmm. And so there's not like this this is uh that's beautiful this is a uh, euphorbia flanagani hybrid but uh -huh. same thing the pot doesn't overpower the plant yeah i see that so see if exactly this pot, what you're saying. if this pot was two inches deeper it wouldn't look nowhere as nice as it does right or if it was wider you know or whatever and you know i didn't have to i trimmed a little bit of the root off of this but not much so it's like a, it's geometrical. Uh, it's a geometry guess. thing here. Yeah, I guess you can put it that way. You know, you, I don't usually think of it that way, but, you know, I just, I can look at a plant, you know, like I'll go and pick up something either, you know, I'll buy it online or I'll see a picture of it or I'll get it at a nursery or whatever. And I can tell almost immediately what pot will look good in that, with that plant. It's mm -hmm. the strangest thing. I, you know, I have no art background. I have, you know, I've been a laborer all my life until now, and I can look at something and say, oh, that needs this shape of pot, this color, this texture, and it just all comes together. And, and I have no schooling in that. When you say laborer, were you a builder, though? Well, I was, you know, I dug ditches, I worked in warehouses and all that kind of stuff until uh -huh. I got hurt. When I got hurt in 91, I couldn't do any physical work anymore because I hurt my um, right shoulder. And so then I was retrained to work in the hospital mm -hmm. and that's what I did till two, 2017. I kind of partially retired. Mm -hmm. So I do a little bit. I do mo mainly the pots right now. That's probably 50% of my income, maybe a little more. That's so cool that you're able to make it into, you know, your passion into your income as yeah. well. Yeah. 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 It's a lot of fun. I have a good time. Yeah, I could see that. I, I mean, wow, that what a what a life to be able to do that, man. And that's pretty cool that you. you I, I can see that you you're being honest when you say that uh, you can look at a plant and know what pot goes for, with it. Um, but it, so you, it's it's interesting though that you're not like um, 
like a mathematician or uh, one of those no. logical drawers or designers. I'm one of those. Uh, Go with the flow, huh? Jack, jack of all trades, it's master of none. I can look at anything uh -huh. and figure it out and, you know, muddle along, get it working. But I can't do a professional job on it. I can, you know, I can, I can repair just about anything around the house on mm -hmm. a car or anything. I can just figure it out. Um, and it's the same thing with this, but I have no training as, as they say. But you are expressing yourself artistically for sure. Oh yeah. 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 You know, Cause I do a lot of things that nobody does really. Sure. <clears throat> Cause a, a lot of times when people stage, they just get a nice pot, they plant the, put the plant in, put a few rocks, put some top dressing. Okay. It's staged where in my eye, that is not staging. Okay. Staging to me is transforming it into a, 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 where the pot, the plant, everything just come together and make one. I don't like the pot to look separate from the, I like them to come together as one, not look mm. like two separate entities. Okay. And so that's always my vision whenever I, whenever I'm creating something. Mm. Understood. That's cool. I want to get an, at another one of these questions. This is weird. Sure. This is a weird one. Green Minded <laughs> asked, what is the worst part about being a professional potter? The worst part? Yeah. Is there one? Hmm. <laughs> what is the worst part? Uh, my hands are dry as hell. Oh, from the clay? The clay, the clay sucks the moisture out of my skin. <laughs> That's probably the worst part. <laughs> um, you know, the rest... You know, everything else, I think it's a, a lot of fun. You know, I can, you know, I'm not, so the pottery, I'm not, I'm self-taught. Mm -hmm. And so being self-taught, you don't know the rules. There are certain things you, that you don't do when making pots, which I could care less what those rules are. Mm -hmm. You know, like they, one is you can't, they always say you can't open the kiln you know, until it op it's like 200 degrees. Mm -hmm. Me, I could care less. I open it at a thousand degrees and let it cool. Uh, you know, pull them out when they're 500 degrees. My, my gloves, <laughs> I go through gloves. You know, uh, I put clay, you know, you're not supposed to have air pockets in the, in the clay because it will explode. I could care less. I just don't, you know, if it's got <laughs> air pockets, it's got air pockets. It, it's not the air pocket that makes it explode. It's the moisture in the clay that makes it explode because the, the the steam expands and then it's got to go somewhere so it explodes it's not the hole in the clay mm. or the air pocket in the clay so there's things i actually introduce air pockets into the clay wow you know which you know the potters are rolling over thinking what in the hell this guy's putting air you know i force air into the clay you huh. know so it, it does different things yeah so you know it's just it's just uh, an unusual outlet for my quirkiness. Yeah, well, but that's what probably what makes your work so unique is those risks, the risks that you're willing to take, and that yeah, the, there's like a maniacal part of your personality that makes that shows up in your work for sure, bro. Like I, I can see yeah. your personality now that I'm talking to you uh, when I look at your work for sure. Yeah, and that's beautiful. That's the whole point, right? Of expressing oh, ourselves yeah. through art. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, someone else asked, Amzyam asked, this is my this is my lady, actually, the mother of my child. Uh, <laughs> she asked what your favorite plant species is. Hmm. There's so many. Um, I don't know. Cyphostema and Euphorbia are probably my top. But, you know, it changes different seasons, different plants, you know, like conophytums for the winter growers, uh, pelargonium, same thing, winter growers. Um, any, you know, I don't really have a, I have a lot. I have a little bit of everything. You know, I don't have many cactus. You know, that's probably the biggest thing. I, you know, I have, I like uh, the tuberous rooted cactus, you know, mammalaria, some of the mammalarias, turbidity mm -hmm. carpus, area carpus, local flora. Uh, that kind of thing, but I don't have a lot of, uh, it's not the spines. I just, I want some character of the root. Uh -huh. And that's, you know, whenever I look at, um, you know, when I am looking at cactus, I'm always looking at something other than 
the spines or the the arms or anything like that. Like uh, there's one I got at the Inner City Show 20, I think it was 2017, and all it was labeled was a punt a puntia species. It was like a hundred bucks. It was in a 14 inch pot, and it's it was there on Friday. I saw it. I saw it on Saturday. Sunday it was still there. Uh, and then so I took my tweezers and I lifted up the arm the arms and the spines and I looked underneath it and I saw this massive root. Okay, I, I bought it, I brought it home, I cut everything off, all the top growth, all the arms. Uh -huh. And I put it into a shallow pot. It's the shallowest pot I could get into and let it grow back. So instead of the arms being long and etiolated like it was, they're little tiny short, just like it would, if you saw it in the desert somewhere, that's what it would look like. Little tiny arms, little tiny flowers, instead of the arms going every which way and, and sparse and that kind of thing. Yeah. So I just, that's the kind of thing I like. I look for when I'm, you know, whatever it is I'm looking for. Did I hear you it, say you judge a plant by its root? You judge the plant by its root? You like its root? I, li I go by the root. Yeah. You know, I always poke around, you know, everybody does it. You know, if you watch, you can always tell who's serious at the sales mm. when they, they're digging around in the top dressing to look at the root <laughs> that's who you know is serious yeah you know because a lot sense. of people they they look at the top of the plant oh they, you know because a lot of times like say euphorbia stellata for one mm -hmm. or phokia edulis you know it's a thumb sticking out of soil with some branches coming off of it and everybody will will go after those oh it's so cool and that kind of thing and it is cool but i always look for the one that is buried down in the pot a little more. Mm. And then, you know, you kind of squeeze the pot and feel it. You look underneath, see if there's anything coming around the bottom and, you know, poke around. And that's the plants that I go after. I don't go, you know, and then if I do get one that is up elevated, I'll bring it home and bury it into a pot for 10 years and then dig it out and then stage it. Mm. Cool. Yeah, I, I I thought I saw some bonsais in there. I heard you said you took some bonsai classes. Yeah, that was back in uh, ninety. That was probably ninety two, ninety three. I took yeah. the co bonsai courses, and you know I tried the regular bonsai, but you know, I killed everything because I didn't water enough. Uh. You know, where this I can not water at all, and they'll you know I can go on vacation for a month and come back, and they're still fine. Is that the trick with bonsais? Because I've killed out quite a few of them. I yeah, used to get the ones water. with the mini plums, and I, I would order them yeah. all the time. They're fucking expensive, and they'd always they're die, expensive. bro. Expensive. I yeah, killed yeah, they all, need of all them. that water. <laughs> lots of water, lots of care. So that's when I, I took what I learned there, and I just apply it to the succulents. Yeah, with the trimming and the pruning and that kind of stuff, like the root work, the yeah. art form of, of of doing that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I don't see a lot of columnars. You don't, you don't do a lot of that, right? Uh, no. Well, I've got a couple that I've beat up and scarred up and made them do different things, but mm. yeah, no, I don't have much columnars. <laughs> you got any grounded couple, plants or are you just strictly uh, I got a few. potting? I got, uh, what I got, uh, I have some pelagroniums in the ground, some Tyler cottons in the ground. Uh -huh. uh, I have raised beds that I have stuff in the so-called ground. Yeah. Um, I had some agaves in the ground. I tried okay. uh, Pucaria pupusii in the ground. It's uh -huh. been, this is its second year and it's doing pretty good. So I'm going to put more in the ground this year. Okay. Um, and so I'm doing more, um, more in the ground. Yeah. I heard you say you, I can, you, you liked landscaping in the beginning. The beginning was the reason why you fell in love with plants was to landscape your first property, right? Yeah. Yeah. What were you saying? Go ahead, continue. I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, oh, I'm putting more stuff in the ground. Like yeah. I put uh, agave white rhino in the ground. Sick. Um, and what I've noticed, compared to pot to ground, it grows a little bit faster, but the leaves have at least doubled in width, mm. which I, I like better than the way it was. And then I bought these, you know, before the craze, so they were, you know, fairly reasonable. Mm. Uh, you know, cause now a small plant is outrageous. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause I paid like 30 or $40 for these. They were in like three inch pots uh, before they, they took off. Yeah. What's so a lot of the plants, uh, everybody wants them. So it's, huh. it's demand and you can't do those. 
most of those aren't done from seed. They're all pups. Mm. So, you know, they only do a few pups unless you core it and then you'll get a bunch of pups. So you got to have a mom so that you got to have many moms, many moms. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why, that's why they're so expensive. Yeah. And same with area carpus that, you know, can only do them from seed. You can do mm. them from cut, you know, from grafting, but they don't, they never look as good as seed grown plants. Mm. Yeah. You know, like the, the area carpus I posted today, the double headed one. Uh huh. Oh, it's over here. Beautiful, man. Wow. So I got this one from a, a private collector about, I don't know, 15, 16 years ago. And it was on a graph, you know, probably six, eight inches tall. And I cut it off, rerouted it. And then, you know, it's been in this pot about, six seven years it's incredible it reminds me of like um like i was saying earlier but i, I was thinking sacred geometry but like a visualizer you know like um when you play music on a computer and you have and you turn the visualizer yeah, on, yeah 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 it's it's very visually stimulating yeah and there's like yeah. a focal point do you work with do you do you use a focal point do you try to like find a focal point when you're, when you're creating something, when you're staging something where you want to draw the mm. eyes or are you just going with it? Whatever well, looks best. I just go with it. But what I try to do is make the pot, not the focal point. Mm. The plant. I want, I want the eye to be driven to the plant. So okay. if you look at all the plants I have here and that are in nice pots, yeah, the, you, your eye never goes to the pot first. Mm. Never. Your eye will be immediately drawn to the plant. Mm. And that's my goal. Whenever I do anything, I don't want the pot to ever overshadow, you know, unless that's your goal, then that's fine. Sure. But for me, I want the pot to just kind of fade away into the background, mm. you know, and a lot of these outrageous pots, like the lava one, I don't have anything staged in a lava pot, but everybody likes them. So I make them for everybody else. Mm. My pots are all kind of monotone and just kind of fade away. Yeah. Cool. So like blending. Yeah. Yeah. Natural, natural colors. Yeah. Natural colors. And it just kind of blends in, you know, it doesn't distract from what's, what's mm. above. I can appreciate that for sure. That one's fucking cool. What is yeah, that? This is a Prasula alstonii. Very mm. rare. Mm. This is probably 30 years old. Do you know what it's native to? Uh, South Africa. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. See, I, I was, I, I want to learn more about this. Like, where do the plants come from? That's pretty cool. Yeah, I saw that you have codex in your email. I just learned what a codex was <laughs> like a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, that's my thing, codex. So, you know, I would, you know, because I've been posting those pictures of soaking, uh -huh. you know, in my story, yeah. soaking plants, uh -huh. and I've gotten a lot of messages regarding soaking. And I tell everybody, I go, think of where their, ha their habitat is, you know, like mm. the area carpus and local flora, they're in a monsoon area. So when the monsoon comes, they're submerged for a day or two or more wow. in water. And then the water goes away and it dries out and then, you know, they come back. So I'm just mimicking a monsoon. Yeah. For those that haven't seen your story, I, I, that's fucking cool. I, I, I've seen that you'd like, you're soaking the pot. You're letting the pot basically float on top of the water, right? Well, it's in the water. It From, doesn't, the pot. Well, you're, you're letting it sink. Oh wait. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's sink. Submerged. I forgot. It's submerged in like yeah. three or four inches of water. All the way I down to the bottom. Yeah. 24 hours. Okay. I remember seeing that now. Yeah. <laughs> 24 uh, hours. Yeah. And that's you can visually wild. see the difference when you pull it out. Yeah. Does it plump up or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks swole, man. Yeah. Swole. It's all swole. <laughs> cool. And and you're letting them like get get pretty desperate for water by that point too, huh? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's I what you do want. It, yeah, I don't do it all the time. I do it, you know, if if I'm not busy with pottery and shows and things like that, and I can stay on top of the schedule, I do that about every two weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, but most of the time I end up going three weeks, four weeks, six weeks. You know, and you know, then then they deserve, then they appreciate that soap. Yeah, yeah. 
uh, so what is your ultimate goal? Um, well, first, actually, I want to go back a little bit. Where, wh what, why did you join Instagram? I'm, it sounds like you were doing this before you were on Instagram, right? Well, if you look at my Instagram, I started Instagram as for food. So mm. if you look at my uh, profile picture, it's a pig head. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that too. And so uh, that was back when I, I still cook like that, but Lechon? I just don't post. Yeah, that was, I was making lechon. Mm. So I, I went to the butcher and bought a pig head. You know, I took pictures of it and I deboned it and rolled it up and lechon it. Mm -hmm. Kowali style. Uh, but that was my Instagram at the beginning was food. And then it just kind of, you know, I said, how many times can I, cause I eat pretty much the same garbage all the time. So now I just kind of, it just kind of the plants took over. And then when I started making pottery, that's when it took off. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, it was probably the last five years it has really exploded. Yeah. And, and that's how, is that how people found you and got you over to the Philippines? Social media? Uh, yeah. 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 Hey, you've, got, you've got a pretty large following, a pretty large presence. Yeah. Uh, I'm surprised. I'm shocked, actually. <laughs> people cool. want to see what I do. You know, the amazing thing I, I was telling Kevin, Crazy for Cactus, like the World Wide Web. Yeah. The listeners, the list is expanding. Uh, it's all over the fucking world that people are listening to this. Yeah. And and I'm yeah. sure you're you're going to give us a, a boost, uh, man. And, and I appreciate that without even, you know, meaning to. Uh, what is your ultimate goal here? Uh, just keep doing what you're doing. Just keep, keep doing. I have, you know, every, I get that question every once in a while. What's your five year goal? I have no idea. I'm yeah. looking at right now. I'm looking what's what's the next plant I can acquire. What's Living the, in the pot moment. that I can, yeah, I never, never, I, I, I have, I have two businesses. I have the pottery business. I have a shoe business. You know, I make shoes and stuff like that also. Cool. Um, but same thing. I, I'm no business plan, no plan at all. Really. Mm. It's all word of mouth. Um, and same thing there with the shoes. I'm self-taught. I don't know the rules. I do what needs to be done mm. and you know, it works and it just, that's what makes the best artists. Yeah. I don't know what the hell I'm doing most of the time. You know, I have the back, I have a medical background. I have, you know, that's where I've trained medically. Mm. You know, so I was or podiatry and orthopedics. Oh, really? And then, and then, you know, self, uh, self-employed pet orthist, which is, I make appliances for the feet. So mm. shoes, orthotics, braces, any, I can make anything for the feet. And it's the same thing. It's the weirdest thing. When I was training, the doctors would say it takes most people years to figure out this process. And you've done it in a, in a few weeks. Mm. You know, and so the doctors saw that I was learning at this rate and would show me all this different uh, uh, techniques and and how to do these different processes and stuff. And so I took everything I learned at the hospital and started my own business. Mm. And it was the same thing. It just kind of grew shoe by shoe until, you know, I did, I did that for like almost 20 years. Where can I find the shoes? And, uh, you... uh, go to tailored shoes, T A Y L O R E D shoes. And you'll see whatever I do. Okay. I don't, I don't post a lot of, you know, nobody wants to see these deformed feet and that kind of thing but, <laughs> <laughs> and these ugly shoes. So I don't post a whole lot on it, but uh -huh. I have a, uh, I have a Facebook page for that and that kind of thing. But like I said, I don't, uh, you know, cause of the HIPAA and that kind of thing. I don't post a lot on it, but occasionally I'll, I'll, I'll post some things that I do. Mm. do some crazy thing I've made or something. What's that? Do you work with leather at all? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, work with leather and plaster and plastics and corks, foams, uh, silicone. I, I can work with pretty much any material. Cool. Well, it's been an honor uh, and a privilege to have you on here, dude. And I, I hope that we can we can do this again. Uh, I really sure, appreciate yeah. I really appreciate the the visual. I'm just gonna post this whole fucking thing uh, on on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, that I think sounds people great are going to be really stoked. Hey, yeah, that'd be great.
Yeah. I'm, I'm feeling really inspired to, uh, experiment more with my plants now. Um, maybe like letting them, letting them get a little desperate for water, maybe stressing them out a little bit. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm interested. Yeah, people, yeah. Most people can't, most people, you know, they tend to over baby the plants. They tend mm -hmm. to over take care of them too much water, too much feeding, too much shade. Not, you know, and then, and then the, all the complaints are the same. It's dying, it's stretching, it's reaching, it's doing this. You know, it's all from too much care. Mm. You know, if you just let them on their own, let them be for a while, they'll be much better. They'll look more better. You know, look like they're supposed to look. They'll have that characteristic look. Because yeah. a lot of times I see plants and they just lose the character from yeah. the way they're grown. Can I ask you about soil? What what sure. kind of what kind of soil are you using? Uh, it's called <laughs> no. I, I, I use pump. I use pumice. Uh -huh. So like eighty percent pumice, mm -hmm. ten percent decomposed granite, mm -hmm. and ten percent old potting soil. Okay. And then I just mix that up, and um, it's so nutrient poor that you know it just recreates what they're used to. Yeah. And then feeding. I put in, let's see, I have a 40 gallon bucket. I put in roughly two glugs of vinegar, which is probably half to a full cup of vinegar into the water to acidify it. Mm. So the acidifying the water makes the nutrients more bioavailable. Yeah. So the roots will take up more nutrients, what little nutrients there are in my water. Uh, Cause I, I put hardly any food, you know, maybe a, a quarter cup to 40 gallons and it's like a, it's more of a tease than a feeding mm. but by acidifying the water it makes the what nutrients are there whether you feed heavily or not will make the nutrients get into the plant easier faster are we lowering or raising the ph with the vinegar uh, bringing it down so okay. somewhere around six 5.8 six. to 6.2 right yeah something like that that's how we grew cannabis 5.8 yeah. to 6.2 yeah, it's very similar yeah. You know, because that's what rainwater is. So, if, you know, mm. everybody, if you see the people that do water with rainwater, the plants, even if you have plants outside and it rains, they always look different than when you water with tap. Yeah. And it's because of the pH level. Yeah. And so, if you acidify your water, whether it's vinegar or ammonia, I don't remember the, it's like a muriatic acid, muriatic acid you can add to the water pH also. pH down, pH up. Yeah. 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 And you will see a difference in the growth of your plants. Yeah. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to be more serious about this. <laughs> I fucking use the hose, Not too bro. serious. You don't, I know, but I, I mean, I want, I want to, I want to be able to like experiment with those kind of things. And I want my plants to have good water. You know, I fucking go out there with a hose and just, you know? Well, yeah, I do that too. Occasionally, you know, cause it's, I have about 800 plants Fuck. and, and so to water it individually, which I would prefer to do, but I don't have the time to do that. So I do the same thing. I just, yeah. you know, one of these days I'll, I'll, I'll set up a sump pump in a barrel and, and, you know, have feeding and that way I won't use tap water. Mm. Uh, but you know, one of these days yeah. I'll get around to doing that. Yeah. That's what we used to do is to go to the water store or, or we'd get one of those filters. Uh, I don't remember what the filter is called, but, um, yeah, I'd go to the water stores sometimes, but I ended up spending quite a bit of money buying water. Yeah. Uh, the one thing that I won't let my plant, certain plants get stressed is I, I grow a lot of trichocereus and I like yeah. the block essence, you know? So if, oh, I, yeah, yeah, if yeah. I let it get into the light too much or if I, you know, well, yeah, yeah. then I lose that effect. But with the, some of these more native like desert plants, um, definitely yeah. want to experiment with this. Yeah. Oh. Well, I really appreciate your time, brother. And, uh, we're just at, just about at an hour. That's perfect. Uh, people can find you uh, at Kitoi. That's K-I-T-O-I. Uh, yeah. You got your email address on there too, right? Yeah. What is uh, it? Feel free, uh, codex.1, O-N-E, at Gmail. Codex1. Yeah. Let me check if so, anybody else sent any more questions. You, know, you can message me. You know, I answer all my DMs. Uh, no matter how complicated the question is, I'll answer. Wow. You know, I, I reply to everyone. That's awesome. 
spreading knowledge. Yeah, because I, like I was telling somebody today, if I wish I would have had this kind of format 30 years ago because mm. there was nothing. There was a nursery, the Great Petaluma Desert in Petaluma. That's where I learned the bulk of what I know now is from the nursery owner there. But mm -hmm. that was, you know, by that time it was, what, mid-90s? And so it was still hit or miss. I, I killed a lot of plants to learn what I know. <laughs> you know, so by me sharing what I know, hopefully you won't kill as many. Sure. Yeah. Well, people you, But you're still going to kill. You're still going to kill. But hopefully you'll, because <laughs> I think back, oh, some of the plants I've killed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this era has it has it very good with the with the endless access to information and with people like you being kind enough to give, you know, an hour of their time. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'm learning. And, and that's what someone asked me. Kevin asked me what my intentions were. And I, I was so nervous and really feel <laughs> like I answered it uh, to the best of my ability. But really, I, my main purpose here is for is to learn and to share knowledge yeah. so that everybody yep. else can learn along with me, you know. So thank you so much, bro. I really appreciate it. Hey, anytime you want to do this again, I'm all, I'm up. Awesome, yeah. and Modesto, huh? You're way out there for me. Way out there, yeah. Me. Everybody thinks I, everybody think everybody thinks I'm in Southern California. And then when I say Modesto, they're like, what? Modesto? Nothing grows out there. Just <laughs> well, fruit. Apparently, it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take a look at Ketoy's feed. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, bro. Thanks so much. If everybody could please uh, like, review, subscribe, and hit that share button, that would be absolutely righteous. Thank you again, everyone, and uh, have a good night. All Thanks. right. Good night. All right, brother. Thanks. Okay. So much.